I would like to call the January 2016 meeting of the Board of Education to order. And for those of you who are watching this live at home, we really don't look like this. We're experiencing technical difficulties that they will try to correct in the next week or two. So then we'll see it the way it should be seen, you know, on a tape delay. Okay, first item, uh, invocation. Ms. Etheridge. Well, Happy New Year to everyone. I'd like to read something concerning the new year and new goals. Here's to new beginnings, fresh starts, reaffirmations of love and promises for a brighter future this new year. For all those with dreams for 2016, I am dusting myself down, shaking off the past, taking deep breaths of new clean air. I am looking at the world for the first time with newly born eyes. My mind is absorbing what I see. I am making new memories, replacing the ones that I no longer need, setting myself free. One by one, I untie my shoes, shoes that have bound me to them with their comfort. No longer will I walk within my comfort zone. The laces are stubborn, the ties are strong. The unique imprint that defines me is pressed deep within the soul. A little voice tempts me to put them back on, to tie them tighter than before, but it is not comfort that I seek, it is change. I have dropped my heavy baggage at the train station, tied to it a solitary single ticket, destination unknown. I have walked away without looking back. I am so light that I practically float along the platform. Laughing at those people that cannot see me, I am euphoric with intensity of freedom. For the first time, my mind is not rushing, and I can see. Clarity extends a finger and points the way. The path before me is intensely bright. I see everything I have ever wanted there before me, every chance, possibility, hope, and dream. I reach out to touch one, and it feels incredible. A new sensation sweeps over me. A spark ignites within me, and the fireworks of 2016 cascade about me. And for the first time, I look up. Happy New Year. Thank you. Uh, next, Principal Renee Dowdy from Curry Tuck County High School will introduce a young lady who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening, Bourne. Cadet Captain Jaris Ingram has earned the respect of her teachers, coaches, fellow students as being a determined individual who thrives for perfection. She's a member of the Curry Tech County High School ladies tennis team, an avid supporter of Rachel's Challenge, and the lead member of our Air Force JROTC's Color Guard. Her constant demand for excellence and quality has resulted in a group of professionals that has grown to be pr proud of our school and our community. She also volunteers numerous hours as a math tutor for student athletes at Currituck County Middle School. She does all of this while maintaining an impressive 4.0 GPA. Jaris lives by her personal set of core values, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all she does. So on behalf of Colonel Keith Grimes, a JR AF JROTC cadet leader, and myself, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Ms. Jaris Ingram to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Would you all please rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jaris, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Okay, our school spotlight this month is on Currituck County High School. Once again, I'll turn it over to Principal Renee Doughty. All right. Good evening, Mr. Stefanik, Dr. Domney, and members of the board and guests. Thank you for allowing Currituck County High School to come tonight to spotlight some of the great things that we have going on at the high school. The traditional high school experience is evolving because the students that we serve have evolved. And in order to keep students engaged, we're constantly having to reinvent and remake what, who we are and how we serve our students. Tonight, I've asked Ms. Tavia Clark, media specialist, to join us to discuss the role that our media center is playing in engaging students in the, in the new high school experience. Tavia is in her second year with us at CCHS. She is part of the North Carolina Digital Learning Network. <clears throat> she is an innovator in her field and always goes above and beyond to provide our students with authentic 21st century opportunities. So without further ado, please welcome Ms. Tavia Clark. Okay. 
thank you for allowing me the opportunity to come talk to you guys tonight. I'm really excited to share with you some of the things that we've been doing in the library during the first semester. Um, so I'm going to talk mainly about two uh, pretty big events that we've held. Uh, the first event is our, um, the first event was our Maker Mondays in November. So uh, my assistant, Beth O'Brien, and I decided that um, we were going to do mini maker events in the month of November. So what we did was we came up with um, two different types of makerspace events, and we allowed kids to sign up for whatever they were interested in. Uh, we hosted these every Monday. So we, well, we started, there were five Mondays in November, so we did the last four. And what the students got to do was they picked either to do our makerspace events that were more um, sort of spa-oriented, because our kids really like that. And then we had some that were more technology-oriented. So what they did is they signed up for either or, and throughout the four Mondays, they went through every different station. So they actually didn't have to choose just one station that they wanted to participate in, and they got to do... Um, each of the stations and what we tried to do when we create these stations for the kids when we give them these opportunities to learn and make is um, we kind of have some driving uh, beliefs we focus on creation so we really want them to walk away having made something having a product um, having designed something we want it to be student driven so we want the students to have the lead in it what what are they interested in um, what do they want to do with it so I might give them a little bit of a push I might say here's this kit and here's sort of the directions that go with it but just play and have fun you know take it and do what you want with it and we want open-ended exploration so I don't tell them that this is what you have to design or this is what you have to come up with I might like I said give them an idea here are some examples of some things that you can do with it and take it and have fun and um, these are a couple different pictures so what you're seeing here um, you can see that these kids have Play-Doh. <laughs> Play-Doh is fun for high school kids as well. And they have this kit called Makey Makey. And this is sort of like a mini um, circuitry, little tiny computer type kit. And what you do is anything that can act as a conductor can actually, um, you can use it with this kit to make something happen. So what we did was we took the kit. I gave them the kit and I gave them Play-Doh. And then I gave them a laptop. And um, they actually created an old Nintendo controller out of Play-Doh, and they were able to touch the Play-Doh to make the Nintendo game work. So we went really old school, back to Super Mario Brothers, um, and they were able to create this controller and then touch it to make the game happen. So you can see on this picture, you can kind of tell like they're touching something with their hands, so they set this whole thing up and then they were able to play Super Mario Brothers, which was really fun for them. Um, and they also played Tetris, which they loved, and they played Pac-Man. They were, they loved Pac-Man. They really liked that one. So, but they were able to do that with this kit and then Play-Doh. And so we talked about circuits. We talked about grounding a circuit, um, making open and closed circuits, um, and things like that. So they actually learned a lot about circuitry, but they got to do something fun, like play an old video game. Another thing that we did during um, the Maker Mondays was we did snap circuits. And you guys might be f um, more familiar with snap circuits. Um, they're really fun. And you'll see these a lot of time in elementary schools. So what I did was um, I ordered the big mega snap circuit kit. Um, and I just kind of gave it to them. And I said, you know, here's the instruction book. Go for it. I was like, I want to see you make something make noise. I want to see it light up. I want to see you take the little helicopter and make it fly. Um, and they had so much fun. Um, and so uh, most of them did actually use the project book and they kind of worked through their, I think I told them, you know, try to get through the first 10. Um, but then of course, some of them were like, no, we want to go to like 65. And then they realized, oh wait, I didn't really understand how the first 10 works and so maybe I should go back and do that. But this was really fun and they got to learn about circuits as well. And then in sort of our more spa oriented, um, uh, stations that we had we had a uh, one that was nail art and the girls had been begging us can we please come in and can we do some nail art and so uh, we set up a station for them we got them all the supplies that they needed and we let them go to town I gave them two iPads and said look up your inspiration you know figure out what you want to do and do it and so they had a lot of fun with that 
And we also did bath bombs. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those, if you've ever heard of the store Lush. Uh, it's a really popular store with kids. Uh, they could not believe I was going to teach them how to make bath bombs. And so I gave them a recipe. And it, this was, it's pretty mad scientist. I mean, you're using citric acid. You're using baking soda. They could not believe that this was going to come together and actually make a bath bomb. And so that was probably the most fun station. Um, a lot of um, the boys that had si didn't sign up for the spa, they didn't want to sign up for the spa stations. Uh, they ended up coming over like, um, these would make really good presents for my girlfriend and my mom. So I've actually got a little more interest in that. But that was really, really fun for them. Can I stop you for just a second? Yes, sir. Is this something that blows up in a bathtub? Or? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, I can explain. <laughs> Sorry. So what <laughs> happens is they're like, um, usually you see them in a ball format. And you draw your bath, and then you drop it in, and it fizzes. And it fills your bathtub with, like, essential oils, and on, it smells away. really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't blow anything. Modern day version. Well, it's a bath powder. bomb. I <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're really, really <clears throat> popular with the kids, though. So, um, But they had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, <laughs> but nice. Yep. And they, like I said, they could not believe that they were actually, like, it was going to work. They were like, Miss Clark, this is not going to work. I'm like, I promise you it's going to work. Um, so those were our Maker Mondays. Okay, so the next event that we did, which has probably been my favorite so far, um, was we did a big Hour of Code event. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Hour of Code. It is a, an annual um, weekly sort of computer science event that code.org um, puts on every year. And so this year, I decided that I really wanted to do something at our school because we have so many kids that are interested in computer science. So what we did was um, we, during Hour of Code, we uh, allowed um, the kids to sign up and they could come in during Power Hour, which if you're familiar with Power Hour at the high school, um, you know, I had to close off a whole section of the library. So that was awesome. That administration let me do that. Um, and they came into the library while other kids were around eating. And um, we did the tutorials on Chromebooks and had the big screen TV with tutorials, the kids that were, you know, brave enough to do their tutorials in front of everyone. Um, and it was really fun. And so what they, uh, basically, um, code.org does, uh, makes these fun game-based tutorials where kids can learn uh, programming, coding, web development, um, UX, user interface. Uh, they learn all of these fun things about coding. And um, through the website, students will not necessarily learn a whole coding language. You can't do that in a 30-minute time period or an hour. But they learn the thinking process behind it, which is really, really important. Because we do have a lot of kids that are very interested in computer science. Uh, during this uh, week of code, uh, the Hour of Code week, there were 200,000 different sites around the world that were participating. So I got to show them this big map and like our little dot because I signed up and I was like, this is our dot. And they saw all the dots around and they were just like, oh my gosh, there's people all over the place. This isn't going to work, Ms. Clark. This is going to crash. And I'm like, no, it's not going to crash. It's going to work. Um, but they had so much fun. And the tutorials were Minecraft. So I don't know if you're familiar with Minecraft, but the kids love Minecraft. And then, of course, my favorite, Star Wars. So I was really excited about the Star Wars tutorials. And just a couple of things. I'll go through these really quick. I just wanted to give you some statistics. Um, this Code.org does Hour of Code Week because they really believe that computer science is the future for a lot of our kids. A lot of jobs are going to be dealing with computer science. And so um, this web, you know, this group believes that all of our kids deserve the opportunity to be able to have, uh, make apps, learn how to make apps, learn algorithms and things like that. So it starts with us doing things like um, Hour of Code Week at our school to get more kids interested so that, you know, maybe in the future we'll have more classes and things that will center around that. Um, this was very interesting to me. Uh, by the year uh, 2022, there will be over 1 million computing jobs open, new computing jobs. So our kids, in order to be able to go out in the job field and to be competitive, computer science is really, really important. And then in North Carolina, um, when this, uh, I think, I want to say that this is about, a, these statistics are about a year old, there were 19,000 open computing jobs, but there were only about 1,100 kids that were prepared out of high school to take any of these jobs. Um, and so right now in North Carolina, there is no um, 
uh, computer science teacher certification, not yet. Hopefully that's coming. There's also no computer science K-12 curriculum standards. So computer science is the future, but you know we're still working towards getting there. So for me, I thought I want to build momentum and I want to get these kids interested and so many of them want to go into this field, but they have no idea what they're getting into. And so I want to give them that opportunity to kind of explore and to start building interest. So what I did was I built a website um, on Weebly, and they, we used this during the Hour of Code stuff that went on in the library, but I also put it out there for teachers who didn't want to bring their kids in the library. They could use this website in their classrooms, and it's still up. It's not coming down. Um, and it has some introduction videos and stuff, and then it has all the links to all the tutorials, like the Minecraft and the Star Wars. And you guys can go on it if you want to try coding. It's really fun. Um, it's game-based, so it's pretty fun. Uh, but the kids were able, the ones that didn't um, necessarily get to do it during power hour because maybe they had tutoring or their teachers weren't able to sign up to come in, the kids could go to this website and do it on their own. It just kind of curated all those links for them. And the way that it worked is they signed up for power hour. I set aside one day where it could just be staffed to come in and do it because I thought how fun would that be if during power hour the kids saw the teachers come in and do coding um, and so a few staff members did come in and all the kids were like looking in the area like hey can we come play and I'm like oh it's just staff today you know so they kind of liked seeing their teachers do that um, and uh, I actually had four classes that signed up to come, two art classes and two math classes, which was really fun. The kids had a great time. And I also let them play with the Spiros. Do you guys, the little ball, Spiros are little ball robots. I should have brought one with me and drove it around. But you use an iPad and you can drive it around and the kids loved that. So they would code. And then there's an app with the Spiro where you actually have to use coding and programming language to get it to do the things you want it to do. So they were able to kind of see how what they were doing in these fun, sort of easy tutorials can kind of, you know, lead to doing some things that are more challenging. And so that's sort of the goal is we hope to kind of get them. I want to get some classes in and do maybe some Spiro mini golf and some other fun things where they can code to try to use angles and things like that with, um, the coding. So here are some pictures. You can see Mr. Bino's there. The teachers, her and Mr. Griffin came in with their classes and they participated and they were coding. Um, this picture I really love. These kids were hooked up to, I had the, um, Chromebook Chromecasting to the TV. If you um, are familiar with the library, the big screen TV, and these kids were working as a group of four to try to figure out one of the tutorials because it was really hard. And they kept wanting, like it said, you have to do it in 12 steps. So they kept saying, well, I want to do it in 11. I want to do it in 10. I want to do it in 9. So they finally realized that as a group, <laughs> they could, you know, work a little more efficiently. So I loved that picture because they were really excited. Um, and then um, you can see the student here uh, with the black shirt. She's actually using the iPad to code the Spiro. And there, those little, the blue and yellow things on the floor there are the Spiro balls. And they're really fun. If you ever want to play with one of those or want to see what it's all about, please come visit us and I will give you an iPad and I'll let you drive it all over the library. The kids love them. They're really, really fun. And this is a picture of one of the students. Um, she didn't want to just code the Spiro. She wanted to play the games that came with it. So she was like doing all kinds of stuff and getting all points. And we were getting new colors and new um, fun things that the, you can make the ball do. She was going to town with it. And these are some of our statistics. Um, in three days with the classes that came in and the kids that signed up during power, power hour, we had 64 kids complete a one hour tutorial, which I thought was really awesome. I mean, they sat there for an hour and they did this tutorial. So 64 kids did that. And I didn't want it to stop there. So I set up a class in codeacademy.com. Now, Code Academy is a little bit different. It's not as game-based. It's not like, hey, let's do some fun things with Star Wars. It actually teaches you programming languages. It is difficult. It is tedious. Um, but I thought if the kids are really serious, when they see this, they're really going to understand, wow, this does take a lot of time and a lot of effort. So I signed up all the kids that participated. And in three days, we had 28 students join the group. They completed 101 exercises in three days. And these are tedious. I mean, you're writing code, like you're actually learning coding languages. Um, I had one student who did 43 by himself in three days. 
I mean, this kid was very excited. Uh, they earned 20 badges, and they did things like making a website, learning HTML and CSS, and some of them started Java. So I was really impressed with these statistics. And I can tell you that since then, um, I knew that they wouldn't do much over Christmas break. But since then, these statistics have pretty much doubled. So they are still working, and I just thought that was really cool because it shows that they're taking initiative outside of just the sort of the fun things. And we are going to do more um, Hour of Code because a lot of kids were just like, I didn't know that I could sign up or I missed the sign up. So um, I'll be happy to share that. If anybody wants to come next time and kind of see it and, and um, interact with us, that'd be awesome. So thank you. Oh, it sounds like you're doing a lot of exciting things in the library. <laughs> yeah. It's changed a lot since I was in school. <laughs> We could only check out books and get yelled at if we were talking. Oh, no, there's not much yelling. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't imagine her making a bath bomb. <laughs> I got two of them for Christmas presents. Did you? <laughs> I was going to ask her if she had samples. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could have a workshop Great. for us to make a bath bomb. I would love for it you would to be. Please, you tell me when, and I'll be sure to make Sounds good. The yeah, board bath bomb session. <laughs> My daughter loves Lush. It would save me quite a bit of money. <laughs> okay, they, they, they cost less than a dollar each. To oh, yeah. Good. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I need to get up with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks. Thank you once again, Tavia. <clears throat> okay, next item, uh, work session review. Uh, before the board meeting, we had another work session. During that work session, uh, we received our fiscal year 2014-15 audit report from uh, Pete Catalfamo. Uh, we heard a career and technical education update from uh, Don Moreau, the director of CTE. Uh, heard uh, some information about a joint garage facilities that we're exploring with the uh, county manager and county commissioners. Uh, then <clears throat> we received information on the 2016-17 school calendar, which the board had no problems with and we will end up adopting tonight. And then we uh, received two budget amendments from Lori Trussell, our finance officer. Next, approval of the agenda. Before I ask for approval, we need to delete item B1, which uh, was an exceptional children's teacher recognition because the uh, teacher son had a ball game or something like that tonight. So we'll do that at the next meeting. With that deleted, do I have a motion for approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next, globally competitive students. These are student board member reports. Mary Kate and Jacob. Hi, yes. Um, Sydney had to work tonight, and Katie is a little under the weather, so S Jacob and I will be doing our um, student board member reports tonight. Um, I'm going to start off with Central Elementary. And Central Elementary has gotten off to a great start in 2016. Students and staff came back to class without missing a beat. Later this week on January 13th and 14th, the mobile dentist will be visiting the building. On January 21st, the home and school organize, organization will be holding their general meeting at 6 p.m. in the school library. At this meeting, they are running a special event called Stuff the Closet. Families can donate classroom supplies for a chance to win a handmade Adirondack chair. The more supplies you bring in, the more chances you have to win. So that sounds exciting. Uh, on January 22nd, the second nine-week report cards will be released. Finally, please plan to attend Central's Leader of Character Awards Assemblies on January 28th. The K-2 Assembly will be at 9 a.m. and the 3-5 Assembly will be at 9.45. For more information about these and other events happening at Central, please visit our webpage and calendar. Now I have Shawborough Elementary School, and the Mustangs have had a great start to 2016. They are very fortunate to have had the dentist visit Shawborough this past Tuesday, and they also he, the dentist was also there today. Over 30 students received dental care. Report cards will be sent home on January 22nd. Student of the Month luncheons will take place on January 28th, and our quarterly awards ceremony will be held on January 29th. The Mustang family wishes everyone a happy and healthy New Year. I also have Moyoc Elementary, and the new year is off to a great start at Moyoc Elementary. We have Ginger Clark, nonfiction author, visiting on January 21st and 22nd, and she will be meeting with students and facilitating a session with our Authors Club. PTA is sponsoring a mismatch day on January 15th. 
We also have a meeting of our Panther Advisory Council, which provides an opportunity for student leaders to share feedback and suggestions on all aspects of our learning environment. 2016 is going to be a great year. For Curry Tuck County Middle School, Mr. Stefanik was actually able to be the MC for their school level geography bee last Friday, and the students really enjoyed Mr. Stefanik hosting the event. The challenge and tiebreaker lasted over 90 minutes, and the winners were in first place Ashton Lowe, and I really hope I don't mess up this last name. The runner up was Justin Hoflick. Is, do you know if that's how you said it? Okay. <laughs> and third place was Piper Antons. So, congratulations to those students. They also held their school wide spelling bee this week, and the winner of the CCMS school spelling bee was Jennifer Flowers, and the runner up was Kylie Howard. We have several exciting high school registration events coming up. On Friday, January 22nd, uh, representatives from J.P. Knapp Early College High School will visit science classes to explain their program. And on Tuesday, January 26th at 6 p.m. in the Media Center, representatives from J.P. Knapp will hold a parent information session. So be sure to let the parents know. On Thursday, February 18th, counselors from CCHS will be visiting social studies classrooms to talk about the high school registration process. And then last but not least, in my personal favorite, Curry Tuck County High School, CCHS is finishing up the first semester this week with exams. It's hard to believe that half of, school, the, half of the school year is over. Yes, it is. I can't believe that I'll be graduating in a few months. So course registration for 2016-2017 school year is about to take place. Counselors will be visiting both middle schools during the month of January and in early February to inform rising freshmen about the course options. The new semester begins January 20th. Students will report directly to homerooms first thing Wednesday to get copies of their second semester schedules. They are very, we are very proud of the increased enrollment at COA. Over 60 students are enrolled in dual enrollment courses for the spring semester. These students are currently underway to earn 398 college credits. Valenkind Week. <laughs> 2016 is in the works. Our guidance staff is busy planning a week full of events aimed at demonstrating kindness throughout the school. So be on the lookout for exciting activities coming soon. And with that, I'll hand it over to Jacob. All right. Well, first off, I'd just like to welcome everyone back from their breaks. I hope you had fun uh, having the air conditioning running during Christmas. <laughs> And uh, I'll start us off on Griggs Elementary. The Griggs students are excited to be back in the swing of things. They'll be having their second nine-week student recognition assembly on Friday, January 22nd. The kindergarten through second grade assembly will be at 8.15, and grades 3 through 5 will be at 9 o'clock. The mobile dentist will be visiting Griggs Elementary School on Tuesday, January 26th. Griggs will also be hosting a derby race on Friday, January 29th, and they're really excited for some friendly competition with Shawboro Elementary. The Griggs PTO will be having a family bingo night on Friday, January 29th from 6 to 8. And I know bingo is my favorite game to play. <laughs> and not being sarcastic. <laughs> Uh, Jarvisburg Elementary, the Jaguars ended 2015 with an amazing Snack with Santa event sponsored by their Jags organization. Students made crafts, played games, had a snack, and got pictures with Santa, and now they're excited to jump into 2016 with several events. The mobile dentist will be visiting on January 14th and January 26th, providing JES students with dental care. The Jaguars are also excited to have visiting author Ginger Clark come to work with the 4th and 5th grade students on January 20th. On January 27th, they'll have the Student Recognition Assembly for the second nine weeks. Kindergarten through second grade will be at 145, and 3rd through 5th grades will begin at 230. Finally, on Friday, January 29th, the Jaguars are looking forward to holding their second club day for students. For Knotts Island Elementary, on December 9th, 3rd, 4th, and 5th grader students attended the play The Best Christmas Pageant Ever in Norfolk. The students enjoyed the performance and had the opportunity to speak with some of the cast members after the play and ask questions. The Santa Shop was open to all students on December 8th to 10th. Students were able to browse and buy Christmas gifts for their family and friends, raising over $1,200. All the proceeds will go to the American Cancer Society. All students participated in a Christmas sing-along on December 18th. Each class performed a selection of Christmas songs while family members and guests were invited to sing along. We appreciate all the parents and community members who came out to support the event. 
The nine weeks award assembly will be held on Friday, January 29th at 2 o'clock in the gym. For Moyak Middle, uh, they've had several events taking place this month. On January 21st, JP Knapp will be in the building to speak to the 8th grade students. <laughs> and on the 28th, they'll be back to meet with the parents. North Carolina Smiles will be there on the 27th to offer free dental care. Basketball and has home games on the 13th, 20th, and 27th, while wrestling has one home match left this month on the 28th. And for my personal favorite, J.P. Knapp, uh, the early college is off to a great start with the spring semester, classes beginning in the last week at both the Rat C. Maple campus and at COA's Elizabeth City campus. On Thursday 21st, we'll hold our first semester awards ceremony in the gym at 2.30 p.m. J.P. Knapp is also beginning its recruitment drive for the class of 2020 this month. Student presentations at Moyak Middle on the 21st and at Currituck Middle on the 22nd will be occurring. Parents' information nights will be held at Currituck Middle on Tuesday the 26th and at Moyak Middle on Thursday the 28th, both at 6 p.m. The application window will open on March 2nd with an open house at J.P. Knapp Early College for prospective students and their parents on Thursday, March 4th from 4 to 6 p.m. And back to the board. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate the presentations there. Okay, uh, next item, field trip request. Mr. Stefanik. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Uh, next, we're going to have videos on the two uh, locals who made the People Taking Action Awards from, uh, I think it's Channel 13? Was it Channel 3? Three. Three. Channel 3? Three. Okay. Well, I, it's only off by a one. <laughs> 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 okay. So if you could go ahead and play those now. Tonight's People Taking Action, we shine our spotlight on a North Carolina teacher making a difference in and outside the classroom. News Channel 3's Kurt Williams has the story. So she had on our way to surprise the special teacher. All right, we got a, we got a full house for this People Taking Action Award. We've got the husband of Laura Hughes, her kids, the superintendent, the principal. How's it going? It is going <laughs> <laughs> you trying to figure out why all these people are here? I actually am. <laughs> Slightly confused. Yes, a big surprise for Moyock Elementary School teacher, Laura Hughes. So what's going through your mind right now? Well, I'm trying to piece together all of these wonderful people and why they're all in my classroom. And your hubby's here. And my husband is here, who I thought was homesick today, and my beautiful children are here too. I explained, we got this email from Stacy Ballou, a parent of one of her students. Ms. Hughes is someone who became a teacher because she loves to teach, loves kids, and cares about their future and their present. Stacy shared how Mrs. Hughes encourages her students to take action and get involved in the community. And this year is Crayontober. The kids collected boxes of crayons to donate to CHKD. A few days ago, the students hauled 283 boxes of crayons to Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters. Last year, she organized the Socktober campaign through her efforts. Her classroom, the entire school, raised 600 pairs of socks to donate to the homeless community. Mrs. Hughes goes above and beyond for the kids in her class every day, and I would love for WTKR to help show her how much we all appreciate her. I have no doubt that Mrs. Hughes will be one of those teachers that are mentioned in a lot of valedictorian speeches in every in years to come. Thank you so much. That was so sweet. I am overcome with emotion, and... Um, you know, it just means so much. I love these kids. I love teaching. I love working for this county and the school. And, you know, just to know that it's appreciated just means the world. Well, she has nominated you for a People Taking Action Award. Laura Hughes, this is for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Plus, a People Taking Action pin. And... We have a community partner, Southern Bank. Southern Bank has a $300 Visa gift card. Oh, my goodness. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. Why 
Why was it important for you to do this? Um, because she is such a wonderful teacher, and when you talk to her, you know she doesn't realize how important that she is. I love her. She's the best teacher I've ever had. A lot of students feel that way. It's clear she's touched many lives. Just ask the principal what Mrs. Hughes means to the school. It's huge. She's, she's such an impact on our children, our school community, and then our, our Moyak community. And then she's reaching out even further and taking it to people who need it somewhere else. And that she's just so thoughtful and kind, and they learn that from her every day. But really, we have such power, and we can change the world. We can change the lives of these kids. It's a great job and a powerful job, and it's nice to know that I'm making a difference. Indeed, she is making a difference, and you can tell by the, by the reaction from her students and everyone around her. You know, I just can't wait to see some of these kids just a few years from now and the stories that they're going to tell about their favorite teacher. But then I see people out in the street and they say, I never see anything good on the news. Remember that story. And tonight's People Taking Action, we head to Northeastern North Carolina to honor a remarkable high school student who has been taking action for years in the battle against cancer. A little nervous. A little nervous. With a very proud dad, we're on our way to Curtis County High School's Agriculture Building. We're looking for a very special 12th grader. All right, so we made it over to the Agriculture Building. We got a good collection of people here that are all a part of this surprise, and we're about to do this in a couple of seconds. First, we wait for our signal. It's okay to enter the classroom to surprise Mary Kate Morgan. Where is Mary Kate? Mary Kay? Can y'all point out where is this Mary? Mary Kay. The teenager was trying to figure out what was going on and why all these people were in her classroom. Who do we see here? Um, I see my mom and I see uh, my sister. This all started with an email from Susan Camden, who got a little emotional reading the very first sentence. Mary Kay founded and organizes the annual kids walk for kids with cancer. It's okay. Mary Kate, who is now a senior, has been organizing fundraisers like this since middle school. Her first one was when she was in the sixth grade, and over the years, she has helped raise over $100,000 for pediatric cancer research. This year's Cancer Walk fundraiser was held this past weekend. It is something Mary Kate has been coordinating year after year. Mary Kate is very involved in school, church, and the community including serving as student representative from the Courage County Board of Education. For these reasons, and many more not mentioned here, we nominate Mary Kate Morgan for the People Taking Action Award. Thank you. So Mary Kate, this is for you, a News Channel 3 People Taking Action Award. Thank you. Plus, a People Taking Action pen and we have a community partner, Southern Bank, and Southern Bank has a $300 Visa gift card for you. Oh, wow, thank you. But the 17-year-old was quick to point out. The community has really embraced this. It's, I really share this award with the whole community because it's not just me. I've had so much help from my friends. The 12th grader <laughs> credits her then sixth grade teacher, who is now her assistant principal, as the person who first inspired her to take action years ago. I appreciate it, but it's her. She's that type of person. I've known her for a long time. So, proud of her. My motivation for helping is Proverbs 327, and that's do not withhold good from those to whom it's due when it's in your power to act. And no matter how old you are, young or old, you can, you can make a difference. And, you know, whether you're seven years old or 70, you still have that same power to make a difference. Wow. Is that something? She's what 17. an inspiration. I'm amazed at her uh, maturity, depth of wisdom. Oh, yeah, for a senior. Jeez. What a big heart she has. I, I mean, know. been doing this since the sixth grade. A hundred thousand dollars. That's um, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yeah, congratulations to both Laura and Mary Kate. It still amazes me when I think about how much money you've raised. Thank That's you. incredible. Uh, next item. Consent agenda. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. I have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, next item, public comment session. Did anybody sign up, Yvette? Okay. Nobody signed up, so we'll skip that. 
Next item is information items. Uh, our next work session will be February 4th at 4 o'clock at the Professional Learning Center at J.P. Knapp Early College. And our next Board of Education meeting will be February 4th at 6.30 right here. Uh, next item, board member comments. Ms. Etheridge? Yes, I hope everyone had a, a wonderful Christmas and nice, nice break, and they're ready to start the new year off fresh and they've made some goals for themselves and for their students and I just wish you the best this year I'm glad to be associated with Currituck County uh, Board of Education and wonderful wonderful people like Mary Kate um, just have a great year if there's anything we can do to help you please don't hesitate to reach out to one of us and let us know your concerns and we'll do everything we can to to help you thank you Mr. Simmons uh, first off, welcome back after a Christmas break. I know our teachers and students both needed it. Uh, first thing, winter sports has started. If you get a chance to come out and see uh, basketball or wrestling or any other the, the other winter sports that we have, please take time to do that. Uh, next, as a lot of people have seen, uh, our high school looks different. Um, over the Christmas vacation, we've had the shrubs removed uh, in front of the the band and the shop area. Um, you can actually see our school. Uh, one of the reasonings we did that was for safety. Uh, you couldn't see a school from the highway and that's the reason that they were removed. We're gonna have shrubs replaced, but shrubs will be going back in uh, in the spring that uh, will be more attractive to our school and you will be able to see through them and see the building. That's the reason that they were removed. Uh, last but not least, you know, first semester is over. Before you blink, especially for our seniors over here, before you blink, uh, your senior year is going to be over. So enjoy it. Enjoy the second half of school. Work hard. And uh, graduation will be here before you know it. Ms. Kraft? Yes. I also echo the sentiments of my um, board members. And I also want to wish you a, a happy new year. I um, visited um, just only two schools this year, uh, this last month. We went uh, went to the holiday course program at Moyoc Middle School. Um, kudos to them, they did a great job. And then the kindergarten program at Moyoc Elementary School, which is always um, a kickoff to the holidays, and they did a wonderful job too. So um, I um, also um, know that before we look it'll be june and we'll be having graduating seniors and uh, so make the most of this time and study hard so that we're going to graduate all those seniors thank you miss gaddis um not to be repetitive but happy new year to everybody um you know we've got half the year left i want to see everybody focused and doing their best and um making the boat making good decisions. Um, I attended the Knott's Island Elementary sing-along. Um, it was very cute. The kids had a blast doing it. Um, I have to point out on television that Mr. Wilson actually surprised the staff and students, et cetera, and sung a solo for us all. Um, the teachers were telling me after they really didn't think he was going to do it. Um, but he did a wonderful job, and it really um, shocked the kids. A lot of them kept asking me, are you sure he's not lip syncing? <laughs> so so they were, they were really surprised. It was really cute. So that left on a high note, and they had a blast. They just thought it was great. So, you know, we have great staff, and that's just one example. And we're just lucky to have them and how much they care about our kids and like to keep them entertained. So have a good day. Uh, in December, right before uh, Christmas break, <clears throat> the board honored Willis Simmons, our maintenance <laughs> director. He had worked with the county for 41 years, 26 as director of maintenance, and he has saved us in excess of a million dollars over the years. And not many people can say that. But what we did to honor him, we named the area where his uh, offices are located the Willis Simmons Maintenance Complex. So congratulations to Willis. Next, I visited uh, Jarvisburg and visited Central today and saw the uh, mobile dentist at work in one of the classrooms. For some reason, I thought it was, you know, like a trailer or something they pulled up when I heard mobile. But, you know, they went right, they took a classroom and it was right next to uh, the library there at Central and did it. So got to see them in action. Uh, <clears throat> as Mr. Simmons mentioned, we took down the uh, shrubs in front of the high school, and 
we're going to ask the ag class at the high school to come up with some recommendations for shrubs and or trees to put back and we're going to listen to what input you know that they have for selection and placement uh, so with that do i have a motion for adjournment so moved second have a motion and a second all in favor aye, aye. meeting adjourned